Lesson 3-7, Comparing and Ordering Fractions. The focus in this lesson is for you to be able to compare two fractions, for you to share the strategies for solving a fraction comparison problem, for you to use various strategies to order fractions, and to place fractions on number lines. But first, let's start with our mental math and fluency. Comparing. Comparing, once again, means that we're either going to be using the less than, greater than, or equal to sign. Let's look at number one. We can first look at the thousands place, and we can see that they both are three, so their value is 3,000. Our next place value is the hundreds place. This one has a four. This one has a nine. Right away, you should notice that four is less than 9. So that's the way our arrow is going to go. Less than 3,482 is less than 3,982. Our next one, again, you start out looking at the thousands place. They are the same number. Look at our hundreds place, a 0 and a 5. So once again, 0 is smaller, so that's another less than sign. And our final comparison. 8,600 versus 8,599. <clears throat> we compare the thousands place, they are the same. We compare the hundreds place, 6 is larger than 5, so 8,600 is greater than 8,599. Which fraction is smaller? three-eighths or one-fifth, or are they equivalent? Remember, when you're looking at fractions with different denominators, we have an eight here and a five here, we want to find a common denominator. So the easiest way to do that is to set your fractions up. The first number was three-eighths, so notice I'm putting three-eighths here. The next one is one-fifth. And what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to find a common multiple of both 8 and 5. What I used to like to do when I was younger is I would list them. Well, first would be the number 8, because 1 times 8 is 8. And then 2 times 8 is 16. 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 8 is 32. 5 times 8 is 40. And then I like to stop at 5. Sometimes I have to list the first 10 multiples, but usually I start out with only 5. Now I'm going to start out with the multiples of 5. Well, 1 times 5 is 5, 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5 is 20. Have you noticed, do any of these two, do they have anything in common yet, a number? Nope, so that tells me that I need to keep going. 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 5 is 30, 7 times 5 is 35. Again, take a double check. Do they have one in common yet? Nope. But I notice as soon as I write down the number 40, 40 is a multiple of 5, and, because that was the number that was here, was 5, and 40 is a multiple of 8. So that's my common denominator, 40. Notice how I'm setting it up right alongside my other fraction because I'm going to convert them so then I can compare them. So how does 8 become 40? Well, we said times 5. So I write down times 5. And then I write down times 5 to the numerator also. Because whatever I do to the denominator, the one down on the bottom, I do the same to the numerator. So 8 times 5, we already said is 40. 3 times 5 is 15. These are equivalent fractions. Now I look at how did 5 become 40, did we say? Well, we had to multiply that times 8 to get 40. So whatever we do to the denominator, again, the number down on the bottom, we do to the numerator. 1 times 8 is 8. Now, 1 fifth 
is an equivalent fraction to 8 fortieths. Now it's easy to compare the two. 15 out of 40 is definitely bigger than only 8 out of 40. So that tells me that 3 eighths is greater than, because we converted it and it says 15 fortieths, the 1 fifth that it asked. How did I justify my conclusion? Well, I compared 3 eighths and 1 fifth. I found my common denominator. I converted them into equivalent fractions for each fraction, which then was easy again to compare to decide which one was greater than the other one. So again, which fraction it was smaller? One eighth or three eighths? And we, I'm sorry, one fifth was smaller, was less than three eighths. Now it's asking you to order your fractions from smallest to largest. What I like to do here, and this is yet another strategy to use, is to look at which ones are greater than half and which ones are less than half. Well, two out of four would be half, so three out of four would be greater than half. One out of 10, well, five out of 10 is half, so one out of 10 is definitely less than half. Two out of six, well, three out of six is half, so it's still close to half, but it's still less than half. 11 out of 12, wow, that's close to a whole. That one is definitely more than half. And 52 out of 100, well, 50 out of 100 is really close to half. So I know that that one would go in the middle because 50 out of 100 would be exactly half. So when I look at this, one out of 10 would be more than, less than two out of six. And again, I said 52 out of 100 is almost half. Three out of four is close, but if I drew that in a circle graph or in a bar line, and sorry, this is not very pretty, this would be approximately three is how much I have, a fourth I would not. But if I had that same circle graph and I cut it into 12, watch as my bottom number gets larger, my pieces get smaller. Right there I have eight. I need to cut it into nine, 10, and again, 11, 12. And look now when I take 11 out of 12. Think of it like a clock. If you were taking 11 out of 12, so you were taking from number 12 all the way around 11, look how small the piece is that I did not color in. So this would be the order of my fractions from least to greatest. So we'd have to write those fractions in order again from smallest to largest. We said one out of 10 was less than half and that was a our smallest one. And as I write it, I'd probably draw a line through it to make sure I knew that I used it. Two out of 10, what I'm counting up, would be my next smallest one. Four out of 10, the next smallest. Seven out of 10. And my largest would be eight out of 10. If you have a hard time understanding this, Remember the denominator, the number down on the bottom, is telling you how many pieces something is broken into. If it was a line, it'd be broken into 10 pieces. And again, I would find my halfway mark, which would be five out of 10. And I would know I need 
1 out of 10, 2 out of 10, 3 out of 10, 4 out of 10, 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10. If I only got one section of that, that would be the smallest piece. If I could have one, two sections out of that, it'd be slightly larger. Four sections out of that, it'd be even larger. Seven sections, even larger. And eight sections out of 10 is almost a whole one. So this is how you would write your fractions in order. I want you to turn to page 86 in your math journal, and I want you to look at all the fractions and write them from smallest to largest. When you complete that page, I want you to bring it back to me, and I'm going to check it for you to make sure you're understanding. Remember, you are going to be pausing the recording. You may have to draw either a circle graph or a line graph like I did here to make sure that you are getting them in the right spot. Pause the tape now and then turn it on after you've come back and checked it with me. If you turn the recording back on, that's telling me that you are have already been back to see me and you are ready to do Math Journal page 87. Page 87 is a check-in assessment so you need to do that entire page by yourself. You need to bring it up to me and I need to check it off and see if you understood how to do that page by yourself before I want you to go on. So pause the tape now, go to Math Journal page 87, turn the tape back on when you're ready. Once you've completed that, you are going to go to Math Journal, page 88. You're going to finish those math boxes. And I know you're seeing spin around and game pieces, but we're not playing that right now. And I'm going to have you identify equivalent fractions. You need to use your fraction circles as needed. And remember to write two equivalent names for two fourths. Go back in the earlier recording and I showed you exactly how to find equivalent fractions. You may use a recording to do this page, so rewind it and watch that again. When you finish with Math Journal page 88, bring it back to me and then I will give you Math Masters page 122 and that's your final piece for this lesson. So finish Math Journal page 88. Come back to me, have me check it. When I check it, please pick up Math Masters page 122. Finish that page, and when you've completed it, bring it back to me, and you are done with lesson 3-7.